hey what's going on everybody what is going on good evening to everyone that is watching um those that are just scrolling through those that probably just got finished with dinner and now you just you know going through the motions of going through facebook and you saw that we are live tonight is a special night it is a surprise if you will um i want everybody that's um tuning in i want you to actually not just watch like just like peeping in i actually want you to click in so that you can comment um this is getting ready to be an interesting evening an informative evening um and an evening that i am excited to be able to uh interview my brother and my friend edward long jr um out of atlanta we all know him or some of you all may not know but you should know he is the proud son of the late legendary bishop eddie long who pastored and found no not founded but pastored the new birth uh, baptist church out of atlanta georgia uh, we know that his father passed away several years ago since then new birth has transitioned into the hands of Dr. Jamal Bryant. Um, and there's been some transition that's happened behind the scenes. Um, Edward is not, only, he's, he's known for working with the youth. He's known for working with young adults. Um, he's known in being a rap artist, a artist, a creative. Um, he's launched out and began his own ministry, his own movement. And um, now, He's an author of his own book, and the name of the book is entitled Son of a Bishop. Um, and so he is doing his book tour, and we're all interviewing him to try to just get insight, not only on the book, but get insight um, just on how he's been doing since his father has gone to be with the Lord and how are things going since the transition of new birth, what's coming up next for him. So before I even bring him on, here's what I need. I need everyone that is watching everyone that is going to watch, everyone that's going to watch this later. I need you to share this live feed. I need you to share it. I need you to share it immediately. Normally, we would be able to send out a text thread and everyone would jump on, but the company by which we use our text, uh, our mass text message system through currently is shut down uh, because of something that's going on with them internally. So. We got to do this old school, y'all. We got to get it out there. So I need you all to share it. I need you to tag people in the comment section. Um, and I need you all to invite people to this live feed. All right. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to bring to the forefront uh, my dear friend, my brother. Um, I'm just going to say pastor, leader. I, how about we say leader? Pastor, leader, uh, now author, artist visionary uh creative edward long jr <laughs> so we're gonna bring him to the forefront right through here what's up man yeah shawty how you feeling i'm well and uh i'm excited to be hanging out with you the ogz family uh compton to atlanta man i'm feeling great how about you i'm good man you you look nice and full you just got finished with dinner come on <laughs> Come on, man. Nice little vegan dinner, if you will. And I love how you said a nice little vegan dinner. That's funny. So you, <laughs> you're doing the vegan journey now too, huh? You know, man, we, we got to tap in. You feel me? And so uh, it, it, it's, I'm still pescatarian, to be honest with you. I, I have my seafood. And, uh, you know, we, 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 we much closer to that Daniel's diet, if you will. Okay. Yeah. You know, we're fasting right now. We're doing the Daniel's diet uh, for the next 40 days. Um, but you know, I will tell the saints out there because you know, I've been knowing Edward now for oh, how long are we working on seven years, maybe eight years? Yeah, we've been in fellowship, man. Real talk, yeah. And um, you know, when I first started out, he used to tease me about being a vegan, you know, <laughs> he, used to, he used to be very adamant about, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna eat this meat. <laughs> Listen, listen, I gave up chicken just shortly after that, and uh, here we are, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, man, I'm glad to have you, man. You know, we, we've been talking um, offline, and, you know, this is just going to be a very, very honest interview. I'm sure all of your interviews have been very honest, but, you know, us, man, we just don't know any kind of way but to just say how we feel. 
That's what I was going to say. We wouldn't have it no other way, man. Yeah. So um, with that being said, you know, there's a lot of, I've already gotten phone calls, text messages from, you know, bishops and, you know, uh another pastor that was on the east coast that normally never communicates with me and was like oh you're gonna have uh bishop son on tonight you know they follow me on the stories they don't like anything they just follow me on the stories in my instagram um oh, trolling trolling yeah and i said um uh, yeah he is gonna talk about his new book um and many of you all may not know this i mean because there's some people that don't know right is that you know bishop eddie long has a, a family, of course, right? But then Edward Long Jr. is really the one that is um, carrying on that legacy. So before we even get started, let's start with the title of this book. I just want to just dive right into that because the title of this book, I mean, where did it come from? Son of a Bishop. You got to be really safe just to go right to Son of a Bishop because everything about that title appeals to this carnal side mm -hmm. what, what made you call it that and did you know that it was it an intentional play on words you know man first of all you do have to be careful saying it. you know you need to say that thing right or, or folks will mishear you you feel me um but no it, it, it was no plan behind it. i wasn't trying to ruffle feathers and things of that nature i, I know this about myself i'm naturally a provocateur you follow me and so uh the lord speaks to me when i'm in intimate settings and the title came in the shower and my nakedness and my cleanliness is when the title came to me and so just as that water was flowing all over me we just gonna let that thing flow and uh people have really been gravitating to it you feel me <laughs> As the water was flowing all over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, so son of a bishop, but the book is definitely about your experience as being a son of one of the most notable, right? And transformative bishops um, of our generation, of our time, Bishop Eddie Long. And so right. this covers that whole thing, right? You know, I, I go a lot of places in it, and he, here it is, in all seriousness, you know, the, the heart of the book, the uh, basis of the book is this. You know, my father, many people viewed him as a spiritual father, uh, others as a coach, a mentor, you feel me? Uh, one who they found security in, safety in, all those kinds of things. And my siblings and I, we're the only ones that actually grew up in the house. And so, you know, even from my father's transition, I, I made it very plain on January 25th, 2017. Eddie Long will never be forgotten. And, and it's never gonna be a day that I'll let go past what he's not felt, you feel me? And there's so many fatherly lessons, so many fatherly stories that we have that others don't have. But how many parents out here, whether married or single, are, are looking for direction in raising their children. I once heard somebody say, and you can relate to this, that there's no manual for how to raise a child. You know, when you, when you leave the hospital, they don't give you a, a, a playbook for how to do this thing. And so I, I believe that one of the best ways to position ourselves to have impact is to be the solution to a problem. And this book is a part of that. It allows my father to still father from his transition by me telling these stories. I'm dealing with sexuality in the book. You know, we're dealing with money. We're dealing with peer pressure. We're dealing with a lot of different things in the book, how to develop an ear, to hear the Holy Ghost, to hear the Holy Spirit, etc. all these things that my father intentionally, unintentionally, vicariously, et cetera, taught me that I want to exchange with the world. And then secondly, you know, you are second generation as, as a pastor, as a minister, you feel me? Uh, I'm, I'm third generation, you know, in, in this space. How, how do we grow up? You know, how do we come up? How do we become young adults and transition and, and go through our personal matriculation, whether we want to be in the ministry or not, but yet still respecting the legacies that we're part of while still developing our own voice, while still developing our ear to hear God, without it being in, in, in conflict 
or contrast with the rearing of our parents. So I'm going there. I'm, I'm touching parents as well as offspring. You feel me? So that households are healed and empowered, that their families are healed and people are made better, bro. So let me ask you, man. So how, you know, I, yeah, I, I am, I'm actually third generation. Oh, you like me. Yeah. So, you know, and uh, probably fourth generation. If you investigate our bloodline, Peter or Paul, somebody is our grandparents. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> it just has to be that way. So when, you know, I know what it feels like to come up in a house um, with a prestigious, you know, pastor. Um, you know, when you have other pastors, kids out there, such as, you know, some of our friends, you know, Pastor Fred Price Jr. You know, you've got Blake and his brother, you know, and, you know, coming up in that house when you have a pastor, a father who is both father and pastor, right? Bishop and father. Um, it is an interesting dynamic. So let's talk about that. <laughs> I'm being nice with that. It's an interesting dynamic. Let's talk about that from your perspective, though, right? How was it coming up as the son of Bishop Eddie Long? The time that they pulled him away, the birthdays missed, or maybe he made all the birthdays, uh, the pressure that was put on you, that moment where you kind of felt like, you know, you got the greatest dad in the world and the dad that also is like never available. I mean, did you deal with those things? How was it? Man, awesome question, you know, and, and, and much of what you said is what it was. And, you know, uh, uh, still is. I, I don't think that, you know, um, my dad is done, if you will. I, I still get visitations. I still He still taps in. You feel what I'm saying? And so, um, again, that spirit still is reverberating and living. You know, growing up, and for me as a son of a bishop, you know, because the experiences can be similar and then have these little nuances or what have you. Um, on, on one end, man, it was it was outstanding. You feel me? My dad is my hero. You know, right. um, it, it, you know, my mom was a flight attendant, right? So when she would take trips, she was working or whatever. I was big WWF fan, wrestling federation, all that. She might call me and have Coco Beware or the Macho Man, Randy Savage, or somebody on the phone. And you know, as a kid, I'm excited right. about it. You know. Right. Growing up there in the A, you know, primetime Dion, you know, he was tearing up the diamond turf with the Falcons, with the Braves, you know, he, he's a star, you know, and all of that. We, we had people that we were fans of, but for me, none of them trumped my dad. I agree. You feel me? Yeah. And, and he knew that. I didn't just say it. It, it just, he just knew it. I just, I, 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 you know, he just radiated that magnanimity to me if you will. And so um, I was able to hold my dad in tension of being my hero while also in moments where he may have come up short and given zero. Like I said, missed a birthday or something vicariously. Yeah, it, it upset me at this and that, all of those kind of things. But I, I still dealt with him as dad. You follow right. me? And, and Pop, he made it easy for me to deal with him as dad because I could always approach him with how I was feeling. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Good, bad, happy, sad, or indifferent. Now, you know, the thing about it for me is that, um, and, and I talk about this in the book, you know, I grew up in a, in a blended household. You know, I didn't grow up silver spoon, all of these type of things, you know. Right. I'm from my father's first marriage, so, I don't remember my parents being together. I have, if it wasn't for a picture or two, there ain't many of them, I wouldn't even know what it looks like for my parents to be together. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So when I'm taking visitations over there with him, et cetera, you got these short windows of time that is not really enough time for something to be off, if you will. You know, right. we and I are trying to maximize this Friday, Saturday, Sunday, twice a month together. You feel what I'm saying? Right. And, and in, in, in the early stages, man, we had the most fun. We used to do what we call uh, Friday night specials. We'd pull out the home video camera, VHS. I still watch these clips, bro. And we just dancing. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, um, uh, Pop was B 
big on Beverly Hills Cop, and that whole soundtrack. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So, so, so it, it, my, my, my point is that it was fun. It was it was like being at Chuck E. Cheese because I'm with my daddy, bro. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and this is before Newberg. This is before you know all of these things. But I was with my father day one when we came to Newberg, 1987. New birth was about a year and a half old. The pastor who was there, Kenneth Samuels, uh, he had a, a little sexual situation. They went in a different path, you know, a different direction. The church had about 300 members. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So we did everything but found it, if you will. From there, boom, pop takes off. And, you know, here comes 1990. Here comes 93, here comes 90, not 93, where we, we erect this edifice, this 3,000 seat sanctuary. Then here comes 94, where, where he is consecrated as a bishop. So I'm with him through the growth. Yeah. And as growth took place, I tell people about the slash syndrome is what I call it, the slash syndrome. For me, daddy is everything, father is everything. For the world, they're caught up in the slashes. Oh, pastor this, bishop that, yeah. influencer this, all of these type of things. You feel right. me? And and right. so as people are gravitating to that, the slashes are really now creating separation of time being able to spend, be, mm -hmm. be spent, quality time, uh, yeah. uh, influence. And so it, it, it went from when I come visit my dad, it's just me and Pop to, well, now it's other people around. Yeah. Now he may be in town. I might be with my bonus mother. <laughs> right. And right. my friends, that visitation, because he ain't right. here. Right. You feel me? And right. so um, going through that process, it was normal, abnormal. Right. I don't really think I felt the impact of that until I became a young adult. And, and and I started just you know thinking and thinking back over things like, and I'm now I'm looking at other people, and I'm looking at them like they suckers. Right. That's just how I feel. And you refer you referring to church folks? Church, not really the lay members, not really the lay congregation. I'm talking about people who are close because it's like uh -huh. I, I'm seeing people for who they are. You gotta understand, bro. I mean, we just keeping it real tonight. GZ, yeah. that's what we're doing. So when I'm growing up with my mom, you know, we growing up in lower income environments. Same with my dad early on, but then Pop, you know, he started to prosper. Right. Like my mom, we wasn't prospering. You know what I'm saying? You know, right. even in my adult life, I, I care for my mom. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, so what, what's happening is that my life is kind of two different extremes. As I'm coming over here, we're starting to come up, and then I go back here. You feel me? I'm 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 uh, 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 in the neighborhood. You know, I'm I'm getting jumped in the gangs and all this kind of stuff. You feel me? So so I, I'm growing in two different ways. It's two people really forming in me. I'm not cognizant of it, but once I get to this adult level, I know how to feed game. You know. Uh, I'm still hanging out. I'm in the clubs, you know. I'm still kicking it like a young adult. I'm seeing certain people out, this, that, and I'm like, oh, this is, bro, you be acting like this at church. I'm the same way I am. So right. I'm seeing stuff. I'm seeing folks. I'm like, oh, y'all cap. Of course, right. that wasn't the word we used then, but, you know, and so now it, it, it's starting to eat at me because I'm becoming frustrated because I'm starting to see game. I'm starting right. to see people using Right. You feel me? It's it's not genuine. When we were first at New Birth, New Birth was a was a family. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It, it was, you know, but but as pop grew and got national and global attention, you know, people start coming in and attaching themselves to something. And I mean, we see what it is now, man. Yeah, you know, I, I you, you said a whole lot, and I think this is this a it is actually a vital conversation. And um, you know, we talked about this privately, and I've bounced it around to a couple of our colleagues that are fellow PKs. That I think it's a conversation that we need to have openly, outright, straightforward about the effects of when your father is known 
and he's some great evangelist. He's a bishop. He's on television. You know, like you know, he's in revivals. And the people, it's a very interesting thing because the people feel as if they are entitled to something that <laughs> that you're like that belongs to me. I mean, right? That, and we never walk in with the whole like, and I'm entitled to it. And it's funny because they always put that label on most PKs, like, oh you feel like something is owed to you, you know? I mean, you're like, well, that's my dad. You know, like, you're, you're pretending. You're pretending, you know, because you you came from somewhere else, you know, or, you know, you're only here because you feel like this platform can advantage you, it can build you up. And if you're not careful, um, it really causes you to have this disdain towards the church, whether it's lay people or as bishops or this kind of other. Um, let me ask you this question then. So how did you personally, what were some personal things you did to stay on track, right? I can, I can talk about the things that I did to stay on track, to still hear God's voice, to still go to the church, um, follow behind my father, right? But I want to hear from you, like as he grew, as the fakes came around, because they, oh, okay. Well, a, a lot of people they fake, right? And we and we see it, right? And and someone's probably saying, "Well, that's not true." I loved your father. Let me tell y'all a secret, and where you agree with me or not. Let me tell y'all a secret. Nine times out of ten, when we see people, preachers or whoever, talking about they love our daddy, that's like a dad to me, and all of that. In our hand, we say, "Miss us with all of that." Mm. Because we already know, and the moment you get mad at him, you're going to scandalize his name. The moment you don't get your way, you're going to split the church, start your own church. Uh, <laughs> and then we already know the little things that you're saying about our fathers, you know, behind their back. Mm -hmm. You know, and oftentimes we we just choose not to say anything. So how? what did you do? What were your, if I can say it, coping mechanisms? that allowed you to still be able to work close with your father even though you knew he was surrounded by some clowns not everybody not everybody so i don't want anybody talking to me i'm not talking about everybody uh, uh, hit dog hollis but some clowns right and some people that you knew didn't have his best interest the jealousy that happens with you i think danny just brought it up how mm -hmm. did what did you do to stay focused so you can walk with your father all them years. Uh, two things, man. I, I'm, 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 I'm reading the word. I have my interpretation of what's going on, etc. When Yeshua, Jesus is talking, he said, "Listen, he, they, they going back and forth, asking him, look, man, it's some 600 or whatever laws and all this kind of stuff throughout the tour, etc. You know, it, it's too much. We can't keep up with all this. So help us out." And he says, "The greatest two is to love the Lord your God with your whole heart." And then number two is to do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. All right. Now, Solomon's kicking game. He says, rebuke is better than secret love. You feel me? Right. So for me, as I mentioned before, my pops always made, made, made himself accessible and allowed me to speak freely concerning my feelings. I don't know where he got this from, but I appreciate it. So the first thing, I love you. He's not God, but he's my father. So I'm, I'm just making some parallels right now. You feel me? So I love you enough to tell you the truth. So I would always keep it real with him. Listen, there are some people around you, these folks, I don't like them. And here's why. I'm not giving you emotion. I'm giving you tangible evidence, receipts. You know what I'm saying? on why I'm feeling like this. If this didn't start yesterday, I've observed, I've watched, I've had conversations, all these kind of things. This is what's going on. So number one, he'll always know where I'm at because I kept it real with him. Right, right. You feel me? So yes. that's number one. I, I, I gotta be able to sleep at night and I can't hold this in. So who better to talk to than him about what I'm feeling, right. all right? That, that keeps up. Whether we walk away in agreement or not on the topic, we still lock and step. Well, he, he, he know where I'm at. <laughs> right. You know, it, 
it, it just is what it is. Then number two, do unto others as you will have them to do unto you. Now, as you mentioned, you know, a lot of these pastors, man, a lot of these folk, church folk or whatever, um, are not able to receive what they dish out. All right. That's that, a whole that, sermon, bro. Come on, man. Not all by itself. You got some that jump on Instagram, Facebook, this, that, and the third. Outs people, talk about people, etc. But and if we were to do it, bro, woo, bro, if we, because the point, because not the, let's, you know, this no, conversation, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. because the truth of the matter is, is that half the stuff that they allow them to fall out of their thumbs, you know, is like fantasy. But if we were to do it, like we come with dates, times, places. And the person you did it with, when you did it, what time, all of that stuff. And yet half of the time when we stay quiet, it's always because our daddies is telling us, son, don't do it. Son, please don't. It's always to save their ministry. It ain't It ain't for the people. And I just want people to know that. And I'm going to let him finish, but I just want someone to hear that. Let that get in your spirit. We don't come for you because we're not, it's not because we're scared. It's never that. It's because we honor our father. Okay, go ahead. It's, it's, it's the fear of the Lord. It ain't got nothing to do with you. Now, I'm going I'm to I'm say something since we pausing right there. <laughs> I have been covering people who haven't been covering me. Right. And who's supposed to be covering me. I'm going to say that again. Yes. I have been covering people who are dishonorable. Yes. Are liars who are deceptive and who the picture is that they have been covering me. Right. Now I'm gonna go back to my my what I was trying to say before. My brother so go back to it and I'm gonna say amen. Not timely uh uh shifted us for a second. You feel me? <laughs> yeah. So, so to get you back on focus, you know, we're just talking about just, you know, how you stayed with him. So number one, you know, you kept it real with him. And I think this is important because we're we're now, I'm a parent. You're mm -hmm. about to be a parent, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's important and vital that we do use these conversations to help us improve as well. You mm -hmm. know, like always allowing it to be a free space, a safe space for your child to come and talk to you about the things that they're seeing happening in church as well. And at least let it get it out of them. There'll be so many people I would come and tell my dad, like that, I don't even know why you rock with that pastor. They foul, you know, and he'd give me this sage wisdom stuff. Your daddy did the same thing. Mm -hmm. All right, so that was the first thing. The second thing he told you that he loved you, which is big, right? Mm -hmm. And then what was what was, the, what was the other thing? So point one is I will go to my father. Keeping it real, just displaying my love even in difficult situations. I love you enough to keep it real with you about how I'm feeling, how your relationships are making me feel and offering my little bit of insight, if you will, concerning what's happening. Number two is I will go to the persons and let them know where I'm at with them. You still like that though. And I, feel, I keep that same energy today. Same energy. You took it right. You took my little thing. I the same energy today. I, I hit. Hey, we need to go to lunch. We need to grab by the E X Y and Z. You feel me? Now, now, because that's just that's just the Lord Himself said. If you have an art with somebody, you go where? Yeah. Not the social media. Not the street right. art. Not to know. You go to the person. Yeah. Now, the second thing that this is Jesus Himself talking. He said, if they don't receive you, then what? You go back and get an elder in yep. the church and come yep. back to them. Then he said, mm -hmm. if they still don't receive you, bring it before the whole church. Now, I'm going to say this because I keep that same energy going. There are some people that I don't approach. They don't text me back. They don't call me back. I don't hit them a few times. Mm-hmm. I don't escalated it. They are pastors. They are bishops. So I don't go to an elder because that would be beneath them. I go to other pastors, other elders who are in fellowship with them. I say, hey, you need to sit down with your boy and I. 
Mm -hmm. Still no traction. So the next move, when I bring it before the church, I don't want to hear nothing. And, and a part of bringing it before the church is this book. So the, the first plug in this interview is where can they get this book? You know, where, tell us where where is it available? I know it's Amazon. Um, tell us all the places we can order it. How much? So in the bottom of the screen, you all will see my name listed, edlongjr.com, edlongjr.com. Dot com. You can run over to edlongjr.com, click on the merchandise tab, scroll down to where it says books, click that link and you'll see Amazon's link right there. You can download the Kindle Reader version, that's the digital version, or you can order um, this paperback copy and it come right to your house. And I, I would love for you to DM me, email, something. Let me know what your thoughts are. I want to hear from you. What's your commentary after reading it? You know, um, I'm going to be clear. This book is not a weapon. You feel me? This book is to provide insight for households. If you're an entrepreneur, you may not have any role in the church other than being a lay member, but you may own a cleanest. You feel me? You may have a car dealership. You may have something digital, some, some sort of uh, crypto uh, business that you are establishing, have established, or what have you. You got sons, daughters, nieces, nephews that you, you, you got some questions, you need some answers. And how do I bring them up in this familiar business? It's some crown jewels in here to the help. Hey, you might be 17, you might be 27, and the same. I'm trying to navigate through some stuff. Look, my family is a family of cooks. I don't want to be a cook, I like logistics. How do I balance the family business with what's in my heart? Maybe I can expand us where they can handle the kitchen and I can make sure the food gets to the kitchen. How do we have these conversations respectfully, et cetera? I'm just giving some crown jewels to help navigate these types of things. And I'm glad and I'm glad for people to understand that, you know, that it's more to it than just, you know, what we know about certain things that have happened. And we're, we're going to tap on that in a second. Um, but get the book because I think it is vital for people to have insight on the fact that there's this assumption that because your pastor is pastoring thousands of people, your father is pastoring thousands of people and know everybody, and driving the flyest car, staying in a nice hotel, that we just sitting somewhere pretty, you know, mm -hmm. you know, with a silver spoon in our mouth, you know. Um, but we too, you know, have had to go out work, build, create our own platforms. Um, and that's what this book is going to reveal to you as well. How do you do that? How do you make a name for yourself without it feel like without it feeling like you're undercutting your father? Um, you know, how do you make a name for yourself when sometimes it becomes contentious between you and your father? Um, or between you and your family when you're breaking out and doing it in a different way. You know, I remember, you know, my father was known as the singing preacher. You know, he has these albums. Like, I wish I had one there. We're talking about the albums, right? And, yeah. <laughs> you know, he was known for singing a song. Everyone knew my dad for singing. And so when I came out preaching, I, for a long time, never sung because I didn't want to be known as a singing preacher or feel like I had to fit the mold of my dad. And all I did was just stick to, you know, preaching for a while. Then eventually I came out singing and everybody assumed that my first album was going to be like my dad, you know, paying homage to the old good old Baptist days, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. And here I come with, <laughs> here I come with Jay Kingdom, you know, uh, a pop feel, performing in clubs. You know, we performed several times at the Conga Room for the Foxhole, which was Jamie Foxx's, you know, leading radio uh, program that aired live every Monday night. Um, and, you know, that was an interesting thing for church people to accept, you know, that I come from my father, I have the flavor of my father, but I have my own calling. So talk to us a little bit about how it is that you were able to kind of go down your own path and establish your own name. Right, because it's and it's funny that people now would think 
that oh he's coming out with this book and they say the stupidest thing church people do um they, they really do they say the most ridiculous things like oh he's only just trying to make a name uh, 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 on his daddy's name that's a shame he gonna wait till his daddy died and then try to build on his name not even realizing that we've already established ourselves you know it's one of the things that our fathers make us do people don't understand that either mm -hmm. but talk to us about how you have been able to forge your own path you are a recording artist kingdom shouting you know <laughs> before that you had enough i only knew you during the kingdom shouty days you know mm -hmm. but you had other stuff you did i mean talk to us about that as well the other avenues that God led you down to establish your own name, your own path, your own swag. And talk to us about, did your father accept it? Did he think, you know, you went down the wrong path for a second? And how did you guys reconcile that? I love it, man. Great question. And, and, and my position is a little different. Um, you know, Jesus, what, what the text says, that he found it uh, not robbery. You feel me? Not, not to try to make himself equal with God, you know? So, so I've never been on the trajectory of trying to establish my own name. I, I'm gonna say this right: when these lawsuits were, were filed against my dad, etc., you know, I had some family members that came to me. Papa and I got the same name, and they came to me and said, "You should probably change your name." Wow. Yes, hear me. This is family. Wow saying you know you should probably change your name and you know and gave me some suggestions of some names or some monikers to to begin to go by and brand if you will and i said hello no <laughs> you know um like no nah, bro that, that ain't you clearly i ain't even sure we family because you clearly don't know who i am right you feel me? if right. anything I, I dug in the dirt deeper you follow yeah. me I, 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 I nestled my cliques in this dirt because I'm like, listen, no, it's game time now. You feel me? And so it, it, it hasn't been uh, for me trying to establish my own name, but more so extend, if you will, the familiar name. See, Joseph, I believe the power in, in, in Joseph, we preach Joseph. All right. We preach Joseph, the dream of all these kind of things. But Joseph doesn't does, doesn't have these dreams. Joseph doesn't walk in all he walks in if there is no Abraham without the promise of the Lord. Exactly. And so that's why you and I talk about being third and fourth and all these generation ministers, et cetera. There are things that are started in us, whether it was whether we were cognitive of it at the time or not, God was, because we were on his mind. You feel yes. me? And yes. so what, what happens is God spoke some promises to your grandfather that yep. that uh, uh, uh Marka is going to be the joseph if you will of your family and, yep. and take you into some things my children you feel me will have their joseph experience i already know i'm on the joseph experience but but be, but it's not that the work started in me i am a continuation of there's no happenstance that our last name is long because we, we will be sustained we, we this is not a short thing this is this is about legacy if you yep. will and so more so step more, less uh was it about establishing my own name and more so about me just going on the journey of the history of who i already am now i'm gonna slow down and say that again i don't want it to come off like i'm preaching but anytime you know me well enough anytime i'm talking i'm teaching yeah, yeah. i'm speaking to but i'm speaking into somebody right now and, and, yeah. and provocative and as much as i pushed up to the limit there, there's some substance even here tonight on this stream for somebody. My father, I'm answering that question. What was that like for he and I? My father had the, the, the sense to know that the Lord has already told me some things about my son and all my children. So, so my father would preach about the now. We're in the now. Whether we've seen the manifestation of it or not, we are in the now. So I'm going to deal with my son in the now, understanding that he's going through the history of who he's going to become, but I see him as who he's going to become now. So because of that, 
I'm not tripping if his name is Kingdom Shawty. I'm not tripping if his name is Young Dirty yeah. Bishop. That was my main name, Young Dirty Young Bishop. Dirty Bishop. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm not tripping if it's this, if it's that, if it's Cujo, if it's Big Main or Big E or whatever it is, because I know the promises that the Lord has already communicated to me for my seed. You feel me? So I'm letting him go through the history of who he's becoming. With that mindset, you feel me? It really empowered me to go through these phases, not as a rebel, but go through these phases as an explorer, yeah. exploring things about me, the environments that I'm in, these Atlanta streets that I'm running, these chicks that I'm I'm running through, losing my mind, sowing my wild oats, etc. You know, and, and, and then when I woke up to the true self that he already knew was there, then it's not a core because I'm having my own Paul experience. And now I can look at my dad and celebrate, man, you never really made me feel bad about this. You never right. put me down about this. You gave me guardrails to stay on track, if you will. But but you let me swerve in the lane. You feel me? You, you, you let me ride that thing for a minute until I woke up to, aha, I, 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 I'm on this Joseph experience, an extension of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Well, because the truth of the matter is, here's what I discovered with my father, was that sometimes, and you're discovering through your child as well, as I'm discovering with Markai, sometimes you start looking at them as they are the closest opportunity you have to explore things that you allow church or religion to enslave you to not explore, if that makes sense. And, and so, you know, with my dad, there was a lot of things that he allowed me to do because really he was looking at it saying to himself, wow, if I was alive in his time, you know, or if I had it to do over again, I would have used that age to maybe have done it this way. I and I, say, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I, yeah, and I, and I want to bring that out because I think sometimes church people, you put unnecessary, unrealistic, and ridiculous expectations on like pastors' kids, judging them in a way that their parents and fathers don't even judge them. You know, um, you know, it goes unsaid. We don't even give them that energy. But you can imagine people who had a problem with your name being Young Dirty Bishop, you know, and <laughs> you can imagine the people that disassociated from me just because it was called Jay Kingdom and I was performing in the club and they was drinking, you know, but I just want to, I just want to release this to somebody. Number one, that's not your child or children. That is that man and that woman's child and children. Shut your mouth. You know, if they're, if they're, if they're not judging them, if they're not critiquing them, if they're not reeling them in, you on the fifth row, sixth seat, you have no opinion. I just I just want to say that some pastor's kid out there is going to appreciate what I just said. They're going to appreciate us. They're going to thank us for putting it out there, right? Um, because all of that, here's, here's the wisdom in your father and in the wisdom of my dad who allow us to go on that journey is that all of that is necessary for who we will eventually become mm -hmm. and who we will eventually minister to mm -hmm. and the audience that we will need to be relevant for, mm -hmm. you know? And a lot of people don't, they're so focused on what's going on at that point. And they're also focused on what your dad looks like, acts like at that age. Mm -hmm. And then we have the privilege of being backstage, you know, at home and we really know Pops really don't have a problem with this. Like y'all, y'all think he's more uptight than what he really is, you know. Um, and so, yeah, I just want I just want to take the time to tell the church like lay off, like just you know back up, okay. And let's do this real quick because you have new music coming out for sure. You have new music coming out, and um, I want I want them to to hear it here um, on our Facebook Live platform. Those that are will rewatch it. Tell us the name of the song. When is it coming out? Is it already available? If it's not, tell us when it can be available. And then I'm gonna have Cheaty go ahead and play it right here, right now, if that's okay with oh, you. Oh man, that's major love, boy. Y'all phone flexing this thing. I love it. Hey, listen, this song is the soundtrack to the book. My guy, Pierre Midor, super producer and I, 
we tapped in, you feel me? And um, he produced this thing. We co-penned it. It's called God Made. When you go through a Joseph experience, you think you're being broken down, but you're really just being made. Being made bigger, stronger, smarter. I'm talking about the $6 million man. I want y'all to do me a favor. If you're not on your phone and you're streaming this from a computer, a desktop, laptop, a pad or something, I want you to download the Shazam app. And while this song is playing, you can Shazam it. It will take you right to Spotify, Apple, or whatever platform you use. So you can download it and stream it for the days to come. Let's drop the bomb on this one. All right, Chidi. Let's see if we can do it. Chidi be working magic on this piece. You good, Chidi? You ready to roll? Sometimes we find ourselves looking for the approval of other people. My dad would tell me that some things only God can do for us. Hey, let's go. He said, she said, they said, but hey, uh, who the hell are they anyway? Anyway, anyway, anyway. anyways. All I care is what you say about me. You say I'm on your mind and love me eternally, unconditionally. Hey, let's go. Yeah, I lost some friends, but I found some realer ones. Found some realer lost ones. a bag, went and got a bigger, got one. A bigger one. So I never had to be afraid. No, Benefits of being God made. Man. I was broken, thanks to you I'm healed no, now. Bad, All the lies and the truth was revealed now. So I'm free to show the world that same grace Can't be broken when you got made Man, church, hurt. church hurt, family hurt But to tell you the truth It's all good now I did my work while you healed all my heart's abuse Thank you, Lord It's true, it's true. Memories are all that's left to prove My enemies thought I was finished, no at? You wrote the end from the beginning, so yeah, I lost some friends, but I found some realer ones. Lost a bag, went and got a bigger one. So I never had to be afraid. Benefits of being God made. I was broken, thanks to you, I'm healed now. All the lies and the truth was revealed now. So I'm free to show the world that same grace. Can't be broken when you God made. Time and time again, you took my path. back went and got a bigger one so i never had to be afraid benefits of being god made i was broken thanks to you i'm healed now all the lies and the truth was revealed now so i'm free to show the world that same grace can't be broken when you got made yeah i lost some friends but i found some realer ones lost a bag went and got a bigger one so i never had to be afraid Benefits of being God made. I was broken, thanks to you, I'm healed now. All the lies and the truth was revealed now. So I'm free to show the world that same grace can't be broken when you God made. Yo, what in the bruh? I like that. I like that. First of all, you're singing. So, you know, that's that, that auto-tune rap kind of. I love it. I love it. <laughs> God, man. I love it. I you love that, me. man. Mm -hmm. I love that, man. I lost the bag, but I got a bigger one. I love everything about it. Y'all got to make sure you Shazam it. Go download it. Make sure you got support. And that's the thing that, you know, I wanted to showcase on this, you know, before we got to, you know, some of the parts of the conversation, you know, I wanted to showcase like your heart, showcase, you know, what you're really trying to get to. And that is just to strengthen our family, strengthen our communities through this book, the lessons we learn. We're privileged, we're privileged to be exposed to so much culture, right? That's the other part about it is that, you know, why people may hate on, you know, the name and this, that, and the other. So many rooms we get into because of that name and it's okay. And, and that's okay. 
and we we come into to know so much more of what's going on in the world outside of our neighborhood so um that's what we we wanted to explore and again y'all make sure you guys go to um his website right edlongjr.com that's www.edlongjr.com and make sure you download the book either get it straight to your house paperback or you can do kindle you know and uh read it that way or it will read it to you so let's touch on this right the elephant that's in the room blah 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 yada 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 <laughs> you touched on it when you talked about you know the lawsuits that came and um you know i just want to know how did you encourage your father in that time i i don't want to get into the whole what they said that, that is just so ridiculous to me right but i want to get into the fact of like how you saw your father after the cameras went off right how you had to minister to him reassure him those disappointing moments that maybe sometimes your father looked at you and maybe he thought you know he was letting you down you know and the things you maybe had to say like what was that process like walking with your dad through that and then after you talk about that then talk about how hard it was even for you to walk through it because that leads to actually how you and I actually met mm-hmm. um but let's start with that just you know everything happened everything broke you know everything you know was going crazy haywire and while everyone's just focusing on him there's a whole family being affected by this mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How, how how was it man how was it walking with your dad doing that well, I appreciate the question, you know, and, and, and when, when questions like this come up, the first thing I always um, want the audience to be aware of is that, you know, we're not sitting in the seat of, of being the villain, you feel me? Um, and we're not sitting in the seat um, of the image that was painted. You know, that was Pop's words in his message the Sunday after these lawsuits were filed and, 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 and these allegations brought forward, you feel me? And Pop's remarks were simply, well, I know why y'all here. <laughs> so I'm gonna preach this sermon first. And then after that sermon, I, I, I'll, I'll deal with all of that. And so after preaching a very anointed word, he then turns a corner and shares, here's my remarks. And remarks can be limited. Oftentimes, people don't have the same, as you mentioned, the privilege. Bishop Morton, Bishop Paul Morton, he he wrote this blurb on the back of my book and he talks about, he says, listen, he was the son of a bishop. So he knows all of the privileges, but also the pressures yeah. that come along with being it. And people got to understand that that is two sides to this thing. It's two sides to being a bishop, two sides to being a pastor. It's two sides to being sued. And to anybody who's never been sued before, I want you to understand, you can be sued for anything. A lawsuit can change your whole life tomorrow. Let, let, me, let me speak in the past. I, don't even, I know it's power of my words. I don't even want to prophesy this over nobody's life. Yesterday, Somebody could have taken issue with you. Praise God they didn't. And praise God that maybe your stage, your platform is not big enough that if they did, the whole world wouldn't care. You feel me? Because people can bring a lawsuit concerning any type of damages, etc. Now, from there, it has to be proven or you all have to come to some sort of compromise. And folks do this all the time come to a compromise because even in you being right or not being wrong, if you will, the financial burden of proving that in mediation, in court, all of these kind of things, bro, it just don't even be worth it. You have done lost your whole house and your spouse. They ride with some, they ride with the person who sued you because now they got the bag. You feel me? So I want to give the proper optics as I'm speaking on this. You feel me? 
Pop comes up and he simply says, I'm not the man who I am being painted to be. That's a very key and powerful statement. Proverbs talks about how we shouldn't be so quick to side with the first person that goes to court. See, the problem with the body of Christ in the church is that most people who I, I've come to find, most believers don't know the word of God. I'm going to pause right there as the music just came down too. You see that timing? The Lord wanted that to resonate. Many believers don't even know the word of God because if you have the word of God, if you know it, and then if it's rooted in your heart, then our response to whatever situation that may arise should be, and I believe would be, from the mind of Christ. So to specifically answer your question now, I had to give that whole prelude about how did I respond and how was I able to uh, uh, support, if you will, my father is because my father made sure that growing up, I was exposed to and knew and had a, a good understanding of the word of God and that it was rooted in my heart so that then when the enemy comes to attempt to steal, kill, and destroy, what's in me can now come out of me. See, the time to get ready is not the time to be ready. And when it's time to be ready, that's not the time to get ready. So when these things, these lawsuits come about, I'm already prepared because I've already been getting ready, putting on the full armor of the Lord to do something that's so simple to do, but so hard for many believers to do. And that's not cuss somebody out. That's not give somebody a piece of their mind. That's not run and cry and not go to church in the middle of a pandemic because we are nervous about and all and, and not all these other things that the world does. But Donnie McClurkin said it best. What do you do? Just stand. Yeah. Stand and you know, on the word. You know, that 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 and 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 that's the part that I think people also underestimate is that, you know, we I used to tell my dad this all the time. I would be like, Dad, you preach today. And he was like, oh, thanks, son. And I used to stop him and say, no, Dad, listen, I'm, I'm not here because I have to be here because I'm your son. Mm -hmm. I'm also not telling you you preach today because I feel obligated. Like, like, I the, rest know of you, like the rest of them, the peanut gallery. Yeah, the, I, I'm yeah, not the, the fans. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like you taught me the word. You taught me good preaching. So mm -hmm. if I'm telling you you preach good, it's because you genuinely preach good. If I'm sitting under you as my pastor, it's because I see you as my pastor and that you can pastor me um and the reason why i bring that up is because i think oftentimes people feel as if we we come to church but we're not listening we're just there because we have to be but we are constantly being fed the word of god both publicly on that stage and privately right there's so many lessons that we we get through the word we make fun of it talking about man every time my dad says something is i always went back to the bible you know, we, we make fun of it, but actually that's what actually keeps us in the midst of these storms, mm -hmm. um, you know, for you to be able to stand with your parents and to continue to, con to continue to portray Christian character, because the hardest thing in the world is to see your, because to the church, it's only the bishop going through something. Mm -hmm. For the church, it's only the pastor going through something. To you, that's your all in all. That's Come your, on. like you said, your superhero. That's your, yeah. your, your, that's the one that, that barbecue that puts food on your table, make sure you was good. Like you said, have those Friday nights where the VHS recorder was out and you're dancing the night away. Mm -hmm. You know, you feel very protective of that Come on. in a way that nobody else could ever, I don't care what they say, they could never. Come I, on. before my mother died, uh my there was an all out assault on my mother's character in a way edward that if it wasn't for god i'd be probably doing this interview over a payphone i mean it, it just it was just amazing the things that you 
particular people were saying about my mother. It was so derogatory. It was the worst thing ever. And I remember looking at my mother and learning from her. This is where I'm going with this. It makes you honor, you know, seeing your parents go through that. When people tear down public figures, I just want to tell you this. That whole scripture that says all things work together for good or the Joseph narrative that says you meant it for evil, but God used it for good. It's like God literally allows your parents, father, mother to go through certain things so it can show you how to handle it when it's your turn, you know? Yeah. My mother has stage four cancer. She knew it all out of saw every single day for three weeks, relentless from, from someone that she helped most of their, their lives. And I turned to my mother and her only response was, son, don't worry about it. You stay focused. You do what God called you to do. That empowered me. You know, I, I, my father, when he was going through certain things he went through, I've seen him sued and this, that, and the other. And he just walked around still loving on the people where I would have been slapping everybody, you know, no, still, no. still preaching and preaching a passionate gospel. I mean, it's worth it's worth being commended. I mean, they 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 were legends. They taught us. They raised us. Um, and I just want to tell you publicly, man, you know, <clears throat> kudos to you for not embarrassing the legacy. You know, right. and you would have been all in right to do so. You mm -hmm. know, you you had all the connections. You could have made some moves. You could have did whatever you needed to do. Mm -hmm. But kudos to you, man, that that not only did you endure it, but you continued to minister. And that's how we met, right? And those that are watching, you know, we're gonna start wrapping it up in a second. But that's how we met because you stayed on the grind. You continued to finish the assignment. You continued to build on the name. And it was interesting because when. Um, they came to me, you know, Dorian Edwards. I mean, Mama right. Dorian Edwards uh, yeah. called me and was like, yeah, I got a young man. He's a rapper. He's an artist. Your church would be a perfect fit. You got open, you know, room for him on Sunday. And I was like, sure. And she was like, oh, okay. Well, his name is, you know, uh, Kingdom Shouty. I said, Kingdom Shouty. Now, what's his government name? You know, I was like, hey, can't nobody come to my church and I just know him as Kingdom Shouty. Like, who is Kingdom Shouty? And she was like, well, he don't really want you to know his name because you might not bring him. And I said, well, what's his name? Uh, Edward. I said, okay, what's his last name? <laughs> Just like, Edward Long. Bishop Eddie Long's son. I was like, okay, cool. All right, yeah, we'll get him in on Sunday. She was like, no, 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 maybe you didn't hear me. It's Bishop Eddie Long's son. I was like, okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, <laughs> but talk to us a little bit about, just a little bit, because I want to get to something that I promised you, we're gonna get to this publicly. But so so hit this real quick, and then we're gonna move to the next one. But just about how the pastor shut down on you, on you, mm. you know, during that time, and how hard it was for you to still maintain your artistry. I was set to go on three tours at that time, that forthcoming summer, and sequentially, all three of them called me with a different excuse as to why I wasn't going to be able to join the tour. Hey, man, you know, we have some budget issues. The tour still happened. Hey, man. Um, one guy who I was real close with, he just told me, hey, man, they, they're not comfortable with you being on the tour. That That's 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 these church folk. You feel me? Fast forward. And even you expressed it to me. I got friends who are trying to suggest me to churches and all these things. And I went through a, like a four year route where I wasn't getting booked to speak or do any music in the church. I, I, like you said, we, we, we have an awesome opportunity to see things from a side that most people never experience. So yeah. I view church folks, I'm talking about leadership in a way that most pew sitters don't understand. And I praise God for that because they don't have this experience because at that point, they probably won't even come to nobody church. Right. But it's allowed me to grow through that. And as you mentioned, being able to love on and hug on folks through it. And as I shared earlier, be able to cover people not afraid.
I think we had a, a, a little connection thing that may be happening. It um, sounded like a motorcycle drove by. Yeah, like that. Yeah, something drove by and, and knocked it off. Maybe trying to race over here. I call myself living in, you know, in the suburbs, and they still sometimes feel like I'm still living where I was before. Turns, yeah, so, yeah, but no, you know, I, I think that what you said is 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 very key. Just in that, again, is that inbredness of, you know, what we were taught to, to honor God above all things. Mm -hmm. You know, to 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 protect the ministry above all things as well. Mm -hmm. Um, which leads me to this last thing. So. We've watched the transition happen, and then um, then we'll, we'll we'll be done, and we'll mention where you can get the book again. Thank y'all for hanging with us so far. By the way, yeah, yes, thank yeah, you. Man. Yeah, thank thank you. You know, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I I was like, how am I going to ask these questions? You know, it's like it's you can interview five thousand people, but it's like when it's time for you to interview your friend, it's almost like you'd be like, you know. But I we talked, you know. But here we are, an hour and seven minutes later. All right, here we go. So the, the transition, mm -hmm. new birth. Um, you know, we know Dr. Jamal Bryant became the pastor. Um, and, uh, you know, the powers that be made that happen. Um, but my, my, my question to you would be, you know, how are you handling that transition? Um, how are you because i'm gonna be honest with you and I, i've said this away from you i've said it to you i'll say it publicly i would have a hard time um watching someone else walk into something that i was physically present watching my father bill and that's why i wanted to say this piece to last because i think that it's almost as if people don't feel as if that needs to be taken into consideration when it was time to consider who would carry on that legacy, right? Um, because you were there when he first got there. You were there when he built the 3,000 seat edifice. You were there when he was consecrated in his bishop. You were there when he went and purchased the property to build the Lithonia location. You were there when y'all paid it off. You were there when he was, you know, the largest ministry in this nation, hands down, changing the culture, changing the climate. You were there when all hell broke loose. You stayed when everyone left. And then when it came time for the transition to happen, it went in another direction. I personally, and I don't know a pastor's kid out there, that would not stand up and also say that would be a challenge for me yet your response i'm just setting this up yet your response has been that you've continued to do what god has called you to do yeah. you've never uttered anything of bitterness out of your mouth um so i want to tap into just your heart posture of how are you processing that I, there was a post that dr uh jamal bryant um posted where he said it was a picture of him and it was his daughter behind him and he was talking about how you know how blessed i am like legacy it was like le legacy like the whole thing was legacy and i was saying to myself oh man but that should be edward <laughs> at new birth with his child behind him saying legacy you know i have that with gz how, how do you how have you trans how have you handled that transition man? you know i appreciate you and i appreciate others like yourself who, who have asked these questions you know just the whole night you follow me um i'm an open book but I, i'm the type of book that i'm not going to open myself because the world that we live in right now things can be taken and misinterpreted as if hey here's somebody who was upset because they didn't get their way so they're being um a tyrant right now or being a brat etc and again without having the full scope people have limited perception and, and 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 it's easy to call someone a hater it's difficult to call someone a hater 
when you understand, well, truthfully, if we're dealing with uh, lineage, bloodline and succession, all of the things that we preach about God's kingdom, that person is not a hater because that's what they're part of. If anything is the opposite, someone else came and interrupted or someone's went in a different direction as you stated, that's not really in line with our faith. That's number one. Number two is, you know, I sat back for the last five years. My father transitioned five years ago and I've been able to sit back and heal. I've been able to sit back and mourn. I've been able to sit back and do all of these things and watch people who were not a part of that ministry fight over that ministry. To watch people who would leave, abandon what they started, what they founded, or what they were part of and built for many years to come to new birth. Because regardless of how they felt about my father, our family, all of those things, what the Lord used him to establish was still better than what they had. Wow. So am I a hater then if I'm connected to rightfully to something that they would venture to abandon to then get a hold of? I think by definition, a hater is someone or envious is someone that sets their eyes on something that they're not entitled to but they go after it. They may be even down talking mm. to try to devalue it, but the mere fact that they're moving towards it to try to ascertain it means that even their down valuing of it is a lie because it's valuable enough to them that they will still pursue it. You know, when my father transitioned, I believe, and I talk more about this in the book, is that, um, I don't want to be spoiled. I want y'all to really read the book and I'm not just trying to try to sell. I really think there's some things in the book. So I'll go ahead because I trust you'll read it anyway. I, I, I believe that, I don't even believe I know, my father's desire was for me to eventually flow in, in that and all. But my father also cared for the ministry, the members, the parishioners and the weight of that ministry, all that comes with it. And so I believe my father just wanted me to have more time yes. in trusting that that would be just the same as Solomon, counsel to surround, to prepare, to groom, to grow for these things. And so it has hurt my heart that that council did not do that, did not come together strategically. Because we can be strategic about a lot of things that we want to be strategic about. So then if we're not strategic about something, then it communicates to me that that's not what you want. We preach messages about you better be intentional. I once had a mentor tell me, when we're dealing with the infinite, the infinite God, we got to be definite. And leaders know this. So when there's no definitive notions, movements, plans for something, then it communicates a whole lot. When um, the Board of Trustees decided after I applied and I went through the application process and the interview process and all of that, and a selection was made, that was difficult for me from the standpoint of knowing the relationship or the lack thereof of a relationship concerning my father and the emerging leadership. So you got two things that are taking place. You got ministries and you got mantles. You can have ministry. That doesn't mean you got the mantle. 
you have the mantle is a DNA thing. The mantle is a relationship thing. The mantle is an impartation thing. It, it, it's two different things. That's why I can move and go anywhere and everywhere and be who I am and don't have to try to be it. That's why I state that I don't have to try to engraft myself into another legacy. I don't have to try to engraft myself into a ministry, into the history of and all of these things because I am that I am. And so as I move and be, it's not again to make a reputation for myself. Yeah. I'm my father's child. The name of the book is Son of a Bishop. Nobody gave me that and no one could take it away. Not only was I there when my father was doing those things, but I was co-laboring with him. You will see pictures in the book, etc. I literally worked in construction with Warren D. Miller Enterprises and Integrity Construction, building the buildings, the edifice. My first job was janitor at our previous building. I was a custodian, a janitor, salute to all the janitors. What was my dad doing with me? He was developing me when I was 13, 14, 15 years old as a janitor, cleaning the toilets at the church. He was developing me and preparing me to be able to deal with people's ish. Specifically yes, the ish of the church. Yes, he was sir. preparing me to deal with the it, the, 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 the it yes. of the church. Yes, and sir. I've never gotten these lessons. And so over the last five years, people have been showing me their tail, <laughs> but I'm able to deal with their it. I'm able to deal with it and understand you meant certain things for my bad. But like Joseph said, God's using it all for my good. And so I can cover those who haven't even been covering me. My one issue that I had overall was it's fine select whomever to lead pastor the church whatever it, it may not be my time it may it, that's that's fine but at least when when david became king after saul one of his first orders of business he came and he said who is still alive because jonathan had died and, and, and others who were part of that cohort he said who is still alive that was in Saul's house, Jonathan's house, meaning of their lineage, the media has attacked them. This has happened. All this kind of stuff has been a lot of collateral fallout, but who in their bloodline is still alive? I butcher his name all the time. My favorite chef, my favorite chef, my favorite chef. And, and here's the thing. He was somewhat of a cripple. Yeah. Why is that important? Because people say I'm different, that I'm, I'm 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 weird or unique or whatever. Okay, well, if you think I have these shortcomings, then, then, then maybe I'm, I, you perceive me to be a bit of a cripple. But what David did, because David didn't have a heart after himself, his own vanity, his own glory, his own outfits, his own collateral, his own clout. He didn't have a heart for himself. The word says David had a heart after God. And before Jesus ever told him what the greatest two commandments were, he said, I got to love the Lord with my whole heart and do to others that I will have them to do unto me. Because if not, somebody may do my lineage the way I, if, if I do wrong by this lineage, somebody may do the one that's standing in the back of my picture wrong one day. So bring him to me, sit him right next to me. No, he's not going to be in the back. No, he's not going to be out in the wilderness trying to figure out life since his father and his grandfather and all of them are here, not here no more. I'm going to make sure that he has a place in his father's house and not only a place, but he's utilized because he's got to have some gifting. If it ain't nothing but his crippled self being able to minister at the Paralympics where well, I can't relate to the people. There is ministry in him somewhere. Yeah. I'm going to make sure, not for me to get the glory, but for God to get the glory by me honoring his father properly and making sure that he's utilized in his father's house. Yeah. And you know what? Even if it's not going to be the pulling in right and then putting under the wing it can at least be a, an official covering and an extension or a blessing and a 
you know, like there, he's still very, he's a part of us. And here's the reason why. Um, I pray the one thing that I've been bothered by is there is a pastor's kid unwritten code, right? We all know, like, there's this code, like it's supposed to be in the streets, like it's supposed to be amongst family, like it's supposed to be amongst friends. That if you date a girl and we friends, I mean, 2022 is cooking up some new rules, but from where we come from, if you date a girl and we friends, she's off. The moment you come and say, this is my girl, that's it. That's it. She's off limits. No one in the crew, right, mm -hmm. could justify even talking to her. It doesn't matter if she talked to him first. It don't matter if she tied him down. It don't matter, like, you know, there's no justification because there is a code in place. I would like to think that, you know, as pastors' kids, we expect that if anybody else is going to understand protecting legacy, it will be another pastor's kid or another bishop's kid, you know? And that's the thing that has you know, bothered me. And I, I voiced it, I voiced it, you know, so I, I that's why I can say it on here, you know, we, we come from the same clock. So whatever I say here, I've said, that's you it. know. Um, and so I pray, and, I, and I, I'll be honest, I, I pray that God will touch hearts um, to do exactly what you just said, you know. Took David some time, you know David wrestled with pride. But David truly knew that if he wanted to win and he wanted to go further, he needed a member of Saul's house at that table in order to deal with a lot of Saul's people who were still a part of his kingdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'll leave that there. You know, Bishop Eddie Long is still pastoring that church, whether anybody wants to say it or not it doesn't matter everybody know dr w john fisher literally came up on the screen this past sunday talked about tithing and the purpose of giving and our offering went up right he's been gone since 2019. <laughs> i mean, I mean there, are people, there are people who did not say amen or don't say amen to my my sermons the entire 17 years I've been preaching and my dad came on the screen before he opened up the word and I heard people whoo oh whoo oh my god yes because people better understand that pastors especially if they've been an influential they've raised and turned boys into men girls into women like Bishop Eddie Long has done so that they're pastoring still from the grave. And if you're not careful and you don't have a member of Saul's house at the table, eventually they rise up. And so usually the only person that can know how to deal with them is us. You know, great design can sometimes feel like I get on their nerves, but no one, no one could deal with great design church family the way I can. You know, because I was raised there. I know there's some things I, I laid down by simply saying, now, you know, my father taught us better than that. And then what are we going to say to that? <laughs> no one can, And I'm the only person I can say it. I want to commend you, bro, um, in you doing what you're doing, moving forward. Um, I want to commend you in doing it with grace, uh, with class. Um, you've seen me calm down. I've seen you calm down. You know, just in the short time, <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. Just in the just in the short time that we've been knowing each other, seven, eight years, you've seen me calm down. You've seen me where I could go to the left and I didn't. I'm watching you the entire time. Just stay right where you know you you need to be, man. And um, God's gonna bless it. God God's going to reward it. He's already doing it, man. He's blessing you. You married. Congratulations again, Thank you know, you. Uh, you know, I couldn't make it, you know, COVID concerns, you know, you got married. You represent, you represent. 
Tell them, man, because I listen, I wasn't there, but my money was there. You represent. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then now we got to represent again, though, because you got a baby on the way. Come on, come on. You already yeah, know. You yeah, around you gotta, owner. yeah, man, we got we got to represent again because you got you got a baby on the way, man. I, I, I appreciate you, man. I, I'm glad we did this. Um, we going to leave it up. We ain't going to take it down. You know, others, you know, they kind of, you know, they take it down afterwards and all that. We're going to leave it up. I want to repost it. They can tag what they want to tag. I don't care. You know, I want to repost it. I pray that people were blessed by this. Put it in the comment section if you were. Um, you guys stuck with us. You know, most interviews by now, it's all the way down to like two people, but they, they still here with us. But I, I want to appreciate you guys for hanging out with us. Um, any last... Um, Last things you want to express or say. Uh, what's coming up for you in ATL? Like, I know you was doing the wine and word for a second. Right? Are you bringing that back? <laughs> yeah, we're we, 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 we going to do something for the summer. I those summer citrus. <laughs> I cannot. I cannot. I can't. Listen. Listen. Um, <laughs> but where I am right now, I'm focused on... Ciroc so 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 and circumcision. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> hey, listen, got to circumcise my son if we have a son. So listen, you might be, come on, profit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. No, that's the branding in me. I can brand anything. Go, go ahead. Listen, listen. No, what we, I'm focused on family. I'm focused on some things in the backdrop right now. Legacy stuff, legacy stuff. So excited. Uh, my family and I, we are, we are really uh, engulfed in some, in some things right now. A lot of people have been wanting to hear more from Bishop Eddie Long, and we want to make sure, uh, Phyllis, thank you so much, Phyllis. We want to make sure that we supply that need, that want, that desire. You feel what I'm saying? Um, continuing to move, speak, et cetera. But, you know, my baby going to be here this summer, so... You know, I, I got to pull up for a second and, 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 and say, y'all, y'all go have it. You know, I'm, I'm at the crib. You feel what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Nestle and doing this father thing. You feel me? So yeah. excited about it, man. 2022 is going up in a major way. I want to push everybody. You know, my book took me five years. Took me five years to heal, become whole, settle some things, all that kind of stuff. But it's here. So some of you have been working on something. It's been eight years, it's been 10 years, it's been 20 years. However long it's been, listen, that's just how long it's been. You can begin to manifest it now. You can begin to bring that thing to the forefront. Go and raise up, go and erect. You feel me? Ezekiel 37, can these dry bones live? Those old dreams, those things that you thought were dead, et cetera, it's time for it to come up. It's 2022. With all the craziness going on in the world, you do not want to go to the grave. Hear me. You do not want to go to the grave and the Lord look and say, that's not a grave, that's a vault. Why? Because there's so much greatness that's locked up in that grave. It's not a grave, it's a vault. Die empty. My father transitioned empty. I'm going to do the same and I want you to join us in doing it. Get the work done. Dr. Michael Fisher, thank you so much, sir, for this tonight. GZ, you know I love y'all. It's going up in a major way. Don't stop. Keep going. <laughs> Man, I, I appreciate you, man. You you dropped so many nuggets on this thing. It was ridiculous, man. You know, uh, you, you, you've grown, man, so much. It's it's ridiculous. I, I, I appreciate you. I appreciate the friendship. Glad we did the interview. Um, and um, for everyone else, go get the book, edlongjr.com. Say it again, www.edlongjr.com. I'm going to tell you something, bro. With that, Every time I get an email from you or something and it leads with like Ed capitalized, I almost always skip past it because I'll be like, is this some sort of a, like an ED infomercial? You know? <laughs> I got a baby on the way, so you know that ain't my issue. We good. <laughs> <laughs> this is just how we get down guys listen we we bros you know we keep it real you know we real bros for real Ed, edward has told me all you know in a very nice way in a restaurant <laughs> i'll never forget that conversation bro <laughs> listen, listen we here man let's go let's all go right. all right everybody thank y'all so very much for tuning in again go get the book son of a bishop and the song the song again tell us one more time God made. It's on every single digital distribution platform. Apple Music, Spotify, 
the whole nine. God made by Ed Long Jr. He was the big D Long Jr. E D Long Jr. Y'all go get it. <laughs> All right, baby's coming in June, so we got to get you out here to preach before then. Because once that baby gets you, you ain't going nowhere. I already know. <laughs> All right. All right, y'all. Uh, I'm, I'm going to pray real quick. Father, I thank you so very much for my friend, my brother. I thank you for the conversation. God, safeguard it. Safeguard it. Let the right ears hear it. God, let those that do hear it, hear it with the right heart posture. That nothing will be taken out of context, that nothing will be used as ammunition for the enemy to try to uh, respond in a negative way or fashion, God. I thank you, God, for Edward's truth. I thank you for his boldness. I thank you for him being passionate and still moving the legacy forward. Not his, not just his earthly father's legacy, but God, your legacy that you gave us, God, over 2,000 years ago through your son, Christ Jesus. Let him be a light that shines bright. Bless him tremendously. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Return all back right. Return yes, back to all that he prayed back to him a hundredfold, Father. We praise you in the name of your son, Yeshua. Hallelujah. I receive it. All right. All right, Danny, you can take us on out of here. Uh, Ed, stay around for a second. But for everybody else, we're getting ready to log off. Enjoy your dinner. Thank y'all. Repost it. We out. <laughs>